I'm uh, Major Joe Womack, 20 years United States Marine Corps, and proud of it. I'm also Major Joe Womack, Africa town born and bred, and proud of it. I always say that because I found that there are some people that I grew up with and know that come out of Africa town and done well. They don't want to admit they're from Africa town. But I, w I was taught by uh, my parents and by um, especially Mr. Henry C. Williams, who was the first and only historian from Africa town, that in order to do something and do it well, you gotta you gotta own it. You gotta home up to it and do it well, and and you will as long as you accept who you are. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the word out about Africa Town, and because it's something that we're proud of, the residents of Africa Town are proud of, and we want the rest of the world to know about Africa Town. Now, I mentioned Henry C. Williams being the first and only historian from Africa Town. He was the first one to write a book, and this is one that he gave me back in the middle of the 70s called uh, Africa Town, USA. But he was the first one to write the book. There have been several written about it. and But what we're doing, myself and others, is getting the word out and uh, uh, to make people uh, know and understand what Africa Town is all about. The story I'm about to relate to you is the way that Henry William told it to us and when we were in, in, in Sunday school on Sunday mornings often, when I was, first heard it when I was five years old. In 1808, uh, this country said that's enough of the slave trade. And so they ruled the slave trade illegal which meant that uh, you couldn't bring any more slaves into this, this country from other countries. Now, the slave trade was still going on throughout the rest of the world, but here in this country, it was illegal. Slavery itself was legal, but you just couldn't have the slave trade. So they had enough slaves in this country to breed their own, basically. Now, just like any law, after they passed this law, people were still breaking it. And so the government, two years later, 1810, said, look here, uh, we mean business. So if you're caught in the slave trade business, we're going to prosecute you, take you to court, and hang you. And so after that law was instituted, uh, slavery was not recorded. Again, the slave trade was not recorded in this country and uh, unless it went underground. And and it went, went that way for a long time until the Civil War began looming over the horizon. In about a, in 1859, some rich people, plantation owners and, and, and land owners and, and builders and businessmen were at the riverboat gambling, having a good time on Saturday like they always do, like they do now. People go down to the casino. Back then it was the riverboat. And and the richest plantation owner and land owner in Mobile County, his name was Timothy Mayer. And he made a bet. He said, look here, I bet you I can bring slaves into this country right under the government's nose and they'll never catch me. The other guy said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. He said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. He said, well, how much do you bet? He said, I bet you $100,000. Now, we put that to the calculator, and we figured out $100,000 back then is worth about $2.5 million today. And so they shook hands, and the bet was on. Now, Timothy Mill was a powerful man. He wasn't used to losing anything, bets included. And so to win this bet, he put he put up another hundred fifty thousand to to secure the bet to make sure that he did the right things to win the bet. So he went out and uh, hired the best sea captain on the Gulf Coast, a Captain Foster out of Mississippi, and together they crafted a, a, a sailboat. Remember, I told you he was a shipbuilder, and this sailboat was not like any other slave ship. It looked like a it was a schooner. It looked like a pleasure boat today. It was fast. It was sleek. But it had a hole big enough to hold 100 people. And that was part of the bet. You got to bring back 100 people. And so uh, they put the boat together, uh, the sailboat together. And uh, he hired a crew, Captain Foster did. And they sailed off to Africa to get the, to get the slaves. Well, remember I told you that the, uh, the slave trade was still profitable. And uh, it was happening throughout the rest of the world, especially in South America. And uh, the slaves, well, the tribes over in Africa were fighting each other. And, and the one that would, inst would capture the other one, put them in bondage, and sell them to the people buying the slaves to bring back for, for slavery. So real profitable to them. Now, you had two tribes on the west coast of Africa, uh, uh, west coast of Ghana, 
the Tokba and the Dahomey tribes. And they were fighting. Now the Tokba beat the Dahomey and put them in bondage. So Captain Foster sailed this ship around the west coast of uh, Africa and he purchased, remember the bet was for 100 people. He, he purchased 110 slaves. Youngest one being five, the oldest one being about 25. And his reasoning was behind, for $100 a piece, his reasoning behind that was to, uh, was because it was a, it was a tough uh, road back over to this country uh, for 100 people, 110, 100 really inside the hole, and he figured that 10 of them would die, 10%. So he purchased 110. Well, these were strong people, none of them died. They all made it. So on the, on the trip back, to make sure that he was not caught, he came a long way up through the Caribbean and, and making stops as he came back to his country uh, like he was a tourist, uh, sailing up the Caribbean, enjoying the island. Well, things being as they were, there are some good people in this country. And, and they got the word to the government that this bet was on. So the government people were out there waiting on them along the Mississippi River. Well, uh, Timothy Mill got the word down to Captain Foster that he was coming up that they were waiting on him. So they fashioned a backup plan. And the backup plan was when you get close to the Mississippi, when you get close to the uh, uh, Mobile River, you will offload the slaves onto a riverboat, and they did, and bring them ashore on a riverboat. And, and the authorities were expecting a, a sailboat. Well, they offloaded them. And when they did that at, in, in the dark of the night, they sailed this brand new ship out to the middle of the boat Mobile Bay, they burned it and sank it. So they destroyed the evidence. So, so they never saw them bringing any, any people ashore, never saw the boat. And But the government still brought him to trial and tried to prosecute him, but they did. They were found innocent. And so he won that bet. In the meantime, the people that he brought ashore, the brothers, the male brothers, divided them up. They sold some of them. And... Uh, but the, the Mill brothers got the book of Captain Foster got 10 of them. And, uh, and, and this was in 1860. They came ashore in, in July the 8th, 1860. So that's the thing that put uh, Africatown on the National Historical Register. Uh, and and uh, that was the last recorded shipment of slaves coming into this country, July the 8th, 1860. So that's a historical fact that belongs to us, Africa Town. Now, that group of people uh, were not slaves long because the Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1863 and the Civil War ended in 1865. So, so when they were set free, uh, they were set free on that land in which they came ashore, which is now Africa Town. Uh, the male family told them that they could take the land and live on. Well, they set up a community of their own. Now, they didn't know much about American law, but they knew about the law, the tribal law, where they came from. So the laws of, that they set up were based upon the laws of a tribe, uh, uh, of a tribe back in Africa, which made them the first community in this country uh, of free slaves in which the laws resemble the same laws as a tribal as a tribe back in Africa. So that's the second historical fact. Now, they knew the value of land, so they began to work and they began to purchase the, the land uh, uh, away from the male family. They, they allowed them to purchase the land. And so, th so they owned most of the land in which they lived in. And uh, uh, the government told them that, look, you have these children you're, you're raising here and growing, uh, you gotta educate them. So they established a, a school back in 1880. That school eventually evolved into the Mobile County Training School, which was the first training school for blacks in the state of Alabama. Now, training is just simply a word, code word for black. So basically, the first black school, public school in the state of Alabama. People used to often ask me, what, that, what they train y'all over there? Well, uh, they didn't train us to milk cows or, 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 or gut pigs or anything like that. We had to same uh, uh, education as the regular public school. The only difference was when I opened my book that I got every year was said property of Murphy High School. So we got their hand, hand me down books about two years after that. You know, they would keep a book for two years and get a new one and bring it on down to us. But uh, 
it didn't stop the, the, the graduates of that school from going on and doing great things. You know, we, we were known in sports. We have Hall of Famers uh, coming from the area. Uh, Billy Williams came from our school, Hall of Famer uh, uh, for Chicago Cub. Uh, Hank Aaron grew up within a stone's throw of the community. Uh, uh, Home Run King, uh, Willie McCovey, Satchel Paige played baseball over in the community. Even Isaac Smith, he was born in, 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 in the area. And so those are Hall of Famers, and, and we had two that played high school together, high school baseball together, Cleon Jones and Tommy Ag, that went on and helped the New York Mets win their first world championship back in 1969, the Miracle Mets. So so we, we experienced great success, especially in sports and in other things uh, at that school. And so and this school, uh, Movement County Training School, was accredited in 1910, which made it the first public school in Mobile County to be accredited. And and, and uh, there were private schools, of course, but it was first public school. So there was rich history in the community, in the, in, uh, the Africatown community and Mobile County Training School. Four points of history, the last slave shipment, first community in which the uh, laws was based on a tribal law, uh, first school for blacks in the state of Alabama, and the first school to be, public school to be credit, accredited in, 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 in Mobile County. And so it has a rich tradition, and we're doing our best to uh, keep it up. The school still exists. The community is still intact. And we're doing our best to, to keep those things intact and, and to even make them better. And that's our goal, to make things better, because uh, we had a rich tradition of, 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 of companionship, and, and ownership within the community that was passed down from generation. And uh, we unfortunately now we're experiencing a struggle trying to keep industry out, uh, more industry. There's industry in the area. And, and, and we're trying to keep, keep them more from coming out because we live through pollution of international paper and Scott paper. And, and, and we don't want to see that happen to our descendants years from now. We want them to grow up and enjoy of uh, freedom, uh, education, and, and in expression, and anything else, just like people in the rest of the world, and not having to worry about a storage tank blowing up in the middle of the night and, 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 and hurting someone. So that's why we love the school, love the community, and, and, and we, we fight for what's right uh, within the community. And, uh, and, and the only thing I can say is, is well, the, the story continues, and that's what we want. We want the story co to continue for, for decades and, 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 and get better. And that's what we're striving for. What, what we're really looking for is, is, is people that want to do whatever they can do wherever they are. If it's a, a financial donation, we've established a, 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 a nonprofit organization here in the community called the Africatown Community Development Corporation. We also have another uh, uh, organization that we're using to fight and keep pollution and heavy industry out of the area called Mobile Environmental Justice Action Coalition. And of course, we have the Mobile County Training School Alumni Association, which is a strong organization. And so with those three organizations, if, if, if there's some uh, financial contribution that someone can help out with, uh, grant writers and, and, and grants and foundations and stuff like that, we'll be, we'll, we'll be glad to, uh, to uh, get that type of a system. Also, we, we, uh, we want to re renovate some of the older homes in the area. And, and, and the community already have a good reputation, and we think that we're a good area for starter homes for, for young people that want to get in a home uh, uh, safe, that's safe, the community is safe, and their kids can have a good recreation and good education. Home somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, of twenty-five, thirty to forty thousand dollars, and and get a good start in life, and maybe move on, or just stay right here. So, so, so that's the thing that we're trying to do, and 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 we want, we know that uh, we have the rich history, and we think that we can uh, be a big part of Mobile's tourism, and so those are the things that we're we're working to try to uh, try to improve for our community. Africa Town is bounded on three sides by water. North, north part is, is Hog Bayou, which is part of the Tensaw River Delta, the largest delta in the state of Alabama, and is actually protected by the uh, National Wildlife Association. Uh, unfortunately, with the exception of that little 
piece that bags up to Africa Town, but we're working on that. Uh, and uh, to the east is the Mobile River, and to the south is the Three Mile Creek. So uh, international paper used to sit on on uh, on a portion of Hawk Bayou, but they moved out years ago because they refused to improve their pollution control facility. And that, and that piece is open. So what we're looking to do is is take that piece that's open right now, where you can actually walk out to the bayou, and turn it into some type of a RV facility, uh, a place where people can launch their boats into the bayou, or even a fishing pier. And uh, and 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 that's what we're look, looking to do with that area. We're also looking to establish a museum. Uh, we have some artifacts that date back to the old days, and we're looking to establish a re welcome center. And 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 we want to we actually want to rebuild the the uh, the Mayher, Mayher plantation. That's the plantation of the people that bought the slaves over. That was part of the history. So we want to rebuild it and use that as a tourist attraction, so people can. Walk in and you know get an idea of what it may have looked like years ago, and so with those things we think that we can and we're only five minutes from downtown Mobile, uh, uh, and so it's all, it's within walking distance, bicycling distance, and so it, it, it's a place of tourism uh, that's been added on the uh, African American Heritage Tour, and uh, with just a little bit more uh, imagination and 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 cleanup we can we can make it probably the second best tourist, second or third best tourist attraction here in Mobile County. I'd just like to say that uh, we here in Africa, Africa Town are proud of the community and proud of our descendants, proud of the ones that raised us and showed us the direction to go. And we're trying to do the same to the next generation. We want the next generation to be proud of who they are, where they came from, and we want to leave them a legacy that they'll be proud of. And with you all's help, we can do that.